Right, okay, so a collision, objects that start apart, then come together and join or bounce off each other. We start as the first one here, there are two objects that are coming together, and then they move off in one direction together, it could be to the left or to the right. Then you've got two objects come together that bounce off one another and move back the way they came, or you have two objects come together and they're not moving at all. Just sticking to one another and not just the momentum they both have is enough to cancel each other and move and they're not moving at all. Okay? So this is the type of collisions we can have and what a collision is. Now, when we're doing collisions we must take into account the momentum and also the kinetic energy. The momentum is mass times velocity. The formula for kinetic energy is what? Andrew. Kinetic energy. You don't remember from standard grade? No. EK? Um, don't shout anybody. Half MV squared. So for all collisions, we must take into account both, uh, so take into account momentum and kinetic energy. P equals MV, and it's always conserved. And then you have EK equals a half MV squared. And notice there's only, you need the same amount of information for, e, for kinetic energy. Okay? MV, that's all you need, you don't need anything fancy. So, an EK is a half MV squared. Whatever happened before, doesn't necessarily have to be what happened afterwards. So, we have two types of EK. We have an EK, EK before, equals EK after, and that equals an elastic collision. If EK before does not equal EK after, that's the same for not equal, if you don't know what that means. EK after, then it's called an inelastic collision. And we will often be asking the question, okay, you're working out these different values of momentum before and momentum after, which is always conserved. Is this, is this um, system elastic? or inelastic. Is the system elastic? So total kinetic energy before, total kinetic energy after. Now, there's a main difference between momentum and energy. One huge difference between them that makes the difference. What is the difference? What is energy compared to momentum? What's the difference between them? Apart from the different formulas, Apart from that being energy and that being a uh, kilogram meter squared, what, in terms of what type of unit they are, do you know of two types of units? The very first thing we did in mechanics. So, Robert, what can you tell me the difference between momentum and EK? One's based on joules, yeah, different units, yeah. One's based on kilogram meter squared, yeah. But in terms of units, we classify all our we classify all our quantities. Keep your eyes open, Carson. It help. Keeps all our quantities into two two distinct groups. Okay, two distinct groups. Anna, scalars and vectors. Good. Energy is that a scalar or a vector? Anna. Energy. Scalar. Good. Okay. Energy is a scalar. So EK, scalar. Momentum, vector. So what does that mean for the difference when you're doing these calculations? What does that mean about doing scalar calculations and vector calculations? What happens that's different in each of the calculations? Direction. Momentum, you need direction. You need a sign convention. You need positive and negative. Kinetic energy, you don't need any sign convention at all. You don't have a positive and negative kinetic energy. You just have energy. Okay? It has a velocity. It has a mass. The energy itself 
is not going to be a vector, it's just a quantity. So that's why you get elastic and inelastic collisions. Because if the kinetic energy is not the same before as it was afterwards, it can easily be inelastic. Now, in terms of explosions, where your velocity always starts off as zero, what's that going to mean for um, the, if they're elastic and inelastic? Well, you've got an explosion. Both times start off as zero, and then you move apart. Obviously, they both start off as zero. One's going to be, say, positive, one's going to be negative. They're moving in different directions. Okay? So if you start off as zero, momentum's always conserved. That'll be positive, that'll be negative. So if you add them up, they end up being zero. Conserved. We'll talk about that in a second. In terms of kinetic energy, they have zero kinetic energy to start with, and then they have kinetic energy. Is kinetic energy conserved? Mm -hmm. Ever in an explosion? Mm -hmm. No, never. You can't have inelastic and elastic explosions. It's only ever inelastic. So that's why it's called elastic and elastic collisions. Okay, let's move on and talk about explosions and what defining an explosion compared to a collision.